1999, a developer called Chris Sawyer developed Roller Coaster Tycoon using only assembly. Of course, we are not doing this in this clip, but build an authentication service using SvelteKit and Supabase. In today's web development jungle, being able to craft an authentication service for your next billion dollar app is a huge enabler. Before we dive into coding, ensure you have Node.js installed and a Supabase account and a project set up. If you don't know what Supabase is, it is an open source tool that offers developers a fast and easy way to set up a backend for their web and mobile applications. Often touted as an alternative to Google's Firebase, Supabase provides a suite of tools, including a PostgreSQL database, authentication services, real-time subscriptions, and auto-generated APIs. Now, let's dive into coding. Let's start building the Svelte app from scratch. This is what we need to create it. We first create a project called Supabase Svelte Kit using NPM. We then CD into it and run the npm install command to install the needed dependencies. Separately, we install the Supabase client library. We want to save the environment variables in a .env file. All we need are the Supabase URL and the Supabase key that you can find in the project settings on the Supabase website. We also install a helper library from Supabase to make user management and data fetching within SvelteKit as easy as possible. We are going to use TypeScript for this demo. We need first to create the hook server TS file. In this file, we are initializing the client on the server. We supply the environment variables that we defined previously when creating the client, and we make use of this helper function to get a grip on the session. Since we are using TypeScript, the compiler might complain about event.locals.supabase and event.locals.getSession. This can be fixed by updating app.d.ts with the content shown on the screen. Next, we create this file to handle the session on the server side. Pretty straightforward, we just wait for the get session, which is an async function, to complete. We need to do the same thing on the client side. For this, we create the layout file to handle the session and the Supabase object. Note that we make use of the same environment variables we've seen previously. We also update layout svelte file to make use of the Supabase object and to validate if the session is still valid. That was the server and the client parts. Now let's move on with creating a login page. I am going to add the following auth component which stores the buttons and the web elements required by a proper login page. Note the redirect to method here. The purpose of this method is to redirect the user to the right website main page when the authentication is successful. We then proceed in creating a page called page server that will return our website URL to be used in our redirect to method that we've seen before. As we are employing proof key for code exchange in our authentication flow, it is necessary to create a server endpoint responsible for exchanging the code for a session. In the code snippet shown on the screen, we perform the following steps. Retrieve the code sent back from the Supabase auth server using the code query parameter. Exchange this code for a session, which we store in our chosen storage mechanism, in this case, cookies. Finally, we redirect the user to the account page. After a user is signed in, they need to be able to edit their profile details and manage their account. Create a new page file with the contents shown on the screen. Now create the associated page file that will handle loading our data from the server through the load function and handle all our form actions through the actions object. Now we actually achieved our purpose. We have a service meant to handle authentication and authorization. But this is not enough. Let's add an extra feature, the capability of storing pictures. Every Supabase project is configured with storage for managing large files like photos and videos. We first create the upload widget, but before that, let's create an avatar for the user so that they can upload a profile photo. We can start by creating a new component called avatar.svelte. The component allows users to select an image file, 
which is then uploaded to the Superbase storage. Once uploaded, the image URL is stored and the avatar is displayed on the user interface. If an avatar is already associated with the user, the component downloads and displays it. The code handles errors during upload and download, such as when a user tries to upload without selecting a file, and it provides feedback to the user during the upload process. Then we can add the widget to the account page. You can see the avatar component created previously being used here. That's it. We are now ready to start our service. Let's start it by running the npm run dev command. Looks great. I am not going to show my email address here for obvious reasons, but feel free to try it out with your own email. You will get a magic link on your email and access it will lead you to this page. All code has been uploaded to my GitHub page shared in the description of the video. Let me know in the comments what you think about this project, whether you like Svelte or Superbase or you totally hate this tech stack. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.